Hello everyone, Mike Smell here for Simulation TV. In this episode of Simulation in Action, I'm going to mix things up a bit and change from my typical topic of simulation mechanical and talk to you guys about simulation mold flow. Specifically, we'll be looking at the gate location analysis type, helping us answer the question, where do I fill my plastic part? In our exercise, we're going to look at the process for performing a gate location analysis using this drill example. We have a plastic housing and we'll extract one of the halves and go ahead and use this for our analysis. Our key learning objectives in this session are going to be how do we import geometry to Moldflow, how do we generate a mesh inside Moldflow, how do we define the gate location analysis type, and then lastly how do we review the results of the gate location analysis and understand what it's telling us. So let's take a look at this inside the software. All right, so here we go. We're going to get started here inside Inventor. We've got our entire drill assembly, and we're going to drill down on the housing itself. Now you'll notice that this is a multi-body solid part where we've got the left and right sides as each separate components, and then you know an interior motor component. So we'll go ahead and hide the two components that we're not interested in for this analysis, and we'll look at just this one plastic part. You'll notice that we have some typical plastic features like bosses and ribs here in the grip. Now that we understand what our geometry looks like, let's get started inside simulation mold flow. First thing we're going to do is access the ribbon and click import model. We'll navigate to this CAD file and click open. We'll first be asked what is our mesh type. We can change this once we're inside the software, so if we make the wrong decision it's not a major problem. We'll define the name of our project and we'll call this drill housing gate location. By clicking OK, the import process will begin. So here we are, we have our geometry. And notice this is just a surface representation of the model that we had, and we'll need to generate a mesh. So as we start to look at the mold flow interface, notice here that in the browser we work top down or left to right across the ribbon with the steps that are required to set up the molding analysis. So we'll start by clicking Generate Mesh, and we'll go ahead and use the default settings and click Mesh Now. Now, when the mesh completes, you notice all of the new nodes that are created will be highlighted in blue, and we can easily turn them off down here in the lower part of the browser. As we zoom in, we can look at the details of the mesh and what this mesh looks like and determine whether or not it's going to be suitable for our analysis. For the sake of what we're doing today, we're going to assume that this mesh is adequate for the analysis we're trying to conduct. If we zoom in, we can look at the detail on the ribs and understand that Yes, it is, again, reasonable. So we'll go ahead and finish the meshing process, and next we're going to go up to the ribbon and click on Analysis Sequence. Here we'll choose the Gate Location Analysis Type. If it's not available for you when you first click it, we can access the More button and then select it from the uh, more, co more Complete menu. Next, from the ribbon, we'll click on Select Material. For this model, we're going to use a general shrinkage characterized plastic, and we can pick that type from our first manufacturer list, and then stick with the generic ABS from the trade name. At this point, we've defined a mesh, the analysis type, and the material, and we're ready to run the analysis. So when the analysis completes, we'll go ahead up to the ribbon again, click on results, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the results that are generated here in the browser. The first result we'll look at is the flow resistance indicator. And looking at the contour, we can see that blue is the lowest area of resistance, with red being the highest. You can see here at the ends of the geometry, uh, we have the higher resistance. And here, where we're actually going to be predicting our best gate location is where we had the lowest resistance. So here in the center of the part is where mole flow is suggesting that we might gate this part. You can see here at the bottom, Worst is the red, so out on the ends would be our worst location. Now, if we look closer here at the browser, we see that Moldflow has created a new study file for us with a gate location defined here at that optimum location. Now, we can use this file to conduct subsequent analysis such as filling or packing or cooling. We'll go ahead and zoom in and look at what that looks like, and there's our injection point indicator that could very easily be moved if we determined that it was not adequate for 
our geometry. So let's go back to the original study file. We'll finish looking at the results, and now we'll talk about a few more advanced options. So when we're performing a gate location analysis inside Moldflow, we have the ability to, one, have Moldflow tell us the best location, but it can also tell us the best location if we know where we do not want to look uh, at a gate. So we could choose to prohibit gate locations, select different regions on the model, and have it figure out, based on the remaining regions, what then would be the ideal location. Further, if we go to our process settings, we have some additional gate location functionality. With this default method, by default, we're choosing just tell us one best gate location. If we think that our part might need multiple gate locations, we could increase that number up to 10 and find the 10 best locations to gate our part. So I hope this has given you a lot of information about how to perform a gate location analysis in Moldflow. So in summary, I hope you can take away three things from this episode. We looked at the process for performing a gate location analysis. We looked at additional analysis options for limiting where gate locations are predicted and the ability to expand on how many gates we have Moldflow predict for us. Lastly, I would like you to understand that the gate location analysis is a critical step in the injection molding process. If an erroneous gate location is chosen, we may have problems downstream with filling, the tooling design, or the aesthetics of the part. If you have any questions about this Moldflow analysis type or any other Moldflow capabilities, feel free to reach out to us at the SimSquad. Thanks for watching.